One of the big changes that the first generation of Ryzen processors brought to the table for AMD was the introduction of SMT, simultaneous multi-threading. This allows two threads to run on the same processor core, doubling the number of logical processors that your operating system can see. But yeah, mainstream core counts have just ballooned so fast thanks to AMD's Ryzen CPUs. With the Ryzen 3000 and 5000 series, we're seeing 16 cores, 32 threads for mainstream parts, which just a few years ago would have seemed absolutely crazy. Well, it was even crazy for the first generation Threadripper. Do you remember when that first released and everyone was just going absolutely ballistic over it? And yet a year or two before that, Server admins or professional artists would have absolutely loved this number of cores for uh, their workloads, and now we're seeing it for the mainstream. But this brings us to a logical question. How does SMT actually benefit games? Does it actually hurt performance? Back when the first generation of Ryzen released, Windows wasn't quite up to snuff dealing with so many cores and threads, and we actually saw detrimental performance in certain games with SMT enabled, Rise of the Tomb Raider being one of those games. Indeed, we actually did rather extensive testing back then, and AMD, Microsoft, and of course game developers were quick to release patches and software updates which did help to resolve these issues. Do we lose any performance in gaming in 2021, and how do 16 real cores compare up against 8 cores and 16 logical threads? To answer this question, we'll be testing using a Ryzen 9 5950X and pairing it with an MEG B550 Unify motherboard, thanks to MSI, as well as an Radeon RX 6800 XT graphics card, thanks to AMD for providing us the card. For testing methodology, I decided that a mixture of both gaming and creative slash professional workloads were the way to go. I tested with three different core count configurations. I enabled um, all of the cores, all of the threads. So for the 5950X, that's 16 cores, 32 threads. I disabled SMT, which means, of course, 16 cores and 16 threads. And then finally, I disabled one of the CCDs, but left SMT enabled, which leaves us, of course, with eight cores, 16 threads. To achieve this, I used MEG B550's Unified BIOS, and I was able to disable the SMT functionality of the CPU and take advantage of the CCD nature of Zen 3. Each CCD features eight cores, and because of the chiplet nature of Zen 3, this means you can plonk, highly technical term, several of these chiplets together to form larger processors. The 5950X features two CCDs, again, eight cores each. So simply by disabling a single CCD, we're left with a similar-ish configuration to a Ryzen 7 5800X, including the same amount of L3 cache, since the chip cache is also held on each chiplet. To make things even more complicated, I decided to also test with two different clock frequencies. The first was setting a fixed multiplier of 42. This means no matter what the CPU configuration, it would always run at 4200 MHz. And then the next option was PBO. Precision Boost Overdrive, of course, adjusts processor frequencies based upon workloads. And this is an interesting and obviously major performance advantage, especially in more lightly threaded applications, but it also runs into more technical challenges when we're kind of testing things how we are. Now, I could have certainly gone in and tweaked PBO to have incre uh, increased performance and, you know, tweaked things and really got more performance out of the 5950X, but I decided to not do that. I wanted to instead have a more representative out-of-the-box experience, so I just left PBO to do its thing and and then obviously, you know, whatever the clock frequencies would normally be, that's what we saw with the different configurations. This video is sponsored by Skillshare. Skillshare is a community of millions of people coming together where there are thousands of online classes where you can learn photography, technology, video editing, and so much more. Skillshare is for the creative and the curious. And if you're busy, then good news. Most of the classes are under one hour long. Furthermore, the classes range from beginner to professional, so even if you're just a dabbler or you're an expert, you can find something to suit your tastes and to refine your skills. The first 1,000 people to use the link in the video description get access to a free trial, and then it's less than $10 a month to continue to learn. And well, the best part is not only is it ad-free, but all of this learning is creative and fun. 
I've started to do creative writing again in my free time, so I'm planning to check out Writing Authentic Fiction, How to Build a Believable Character, which is a class presented by author Sabah Tahir to help broaden my creative style, grow your creativity, and check out the link in the video description and join Skillshare. This is also an article, so if you prefer to browse the results in your own time, then of course you can check the article out, or if you prefer the written word, you can also naturally check the article out as well. It is, as always, linked in the video description. With that said, let's start looking at some results, and we'll first of all start with the creative slash professional applications. Starting our testing with Blender, and well, in the Blender benchmark run, you can see an excellent showcasing for SMT scaling. The Victor part of the benchmark is extremely lengthy, and with all of the cores and threads being taxed, the Zen 3 Base 5950X destroys the workload in just 6 minutes 42 seconds. This is, well, honestly damn impressive. But what's further impressive is that compared to the same workload with SMT disabled, we're losing 37% of performance roundabout. The 16 cores, 32 threads is roughly about twice as quick as the eight core, 16 threads. Meaning with Blender, not only is there a tremendous difference with the SMT, but the Ryzen architecture just scales wonderfully. Frybench is perhaps even more interesting as the application loves both threads and cores. With eight cores, 16 threads, again, looking at the fixed results, being only 25% slower than 16 real cores, i.e. SMT disabled, which is actually better even than Blender. Also, SMT results are just nuts, with a 50% speed up. Frybench is definitely a shorter run compared to many of the other tests we're seeing here, but this is definitely one of the best case scenarios for showcasing Zen's SMT. Corona 1.3 provides two meaningful measurements, with both the number of rays being generated a second and the time the whole thing took. Of course, lower therefore is better. SMT seems no less meaningful with Corona 1.3 in our benchmarks, with the fixed clock speed showing a 20 second difference between SMT 16 cores and 16 real cores. Again, the Ryzen 9 5950X just scales like crazy in our benchmark results demolishing the test in half the time with the full 16 cores and 32 threads enabled, generating an eye-watering 10.5 million rays a second to do so. Handbrake is actually quite an interesting case because it doesn't fully leverage all of the threads and cores of the processor. Hence, SMT here with full 16 cores has very little impact on our Ryzen 9 5950X benchmark results. Despite this, eight cores and 16 threads, in other words, are well, I guess Ryzen 5800X, we've essentially created, thanks to disabling one of our CCDs, it's definitely behind the 16 core, 16 thread results. Again though, the CPU usage wasn't close to being 100%. And when we had the fully enabled chip, 16 cores, 32 threads, we would regularly see 50 or 60% usage, which is nowhere near fully using the chip, of course. This does leave plenty of performance left on the table for gaming slash other things. Adobe Premiere, well, much the same really. It again doesn't max out the usage of the processor. So here PBO testing definitely benefits with higher clock frequencies on fewer cores. I also disabled GPU acceleration and I had two game clips running a 50-50 split screen. One of the clips was 4K with high bit rate, the other being high bit rate 1080p resized to 4K with tons of effects applied. I then exported all of this to a final composite. And what about gaming? Well, yeah, the 5950X isn't necessarily a CPU that I would recommend purely for gaming because I don't think most games need all of those threads and cores, but I was very curious to see how SMT affects gaming in 2021. I've actually done similar testing for this with Intel and the 10900K. So if you're curious about those results, I will also link them in the video description. Let's start out with Lara and the Radeon RX 6800 XT with Rise of the Tomb Raider. Yep, it's an older game, but Rise of the Tomb Raider was one of those titles where SMT wasn't brilliant for Zen when it launched back in 2017. Again, I did testing of this back in the day. Of course, Rise of the Tomb Raider only had Haskell-based cards, such as the GTX 1080 and 1080 Ti as the kind of highest end performance, but now the Radeon RX 6800 XT has way more processing power. 
Nevertheless, Rise of the Tomb Raider is still very demanding. With 4K, max resolutions really start pegging the GPU. For lower resolution testing though, it's, well, honestly a mixed bag. PBO results offering almost identical performance, whether you're looking at 8 cores, 16 threads, or 16 cores, 32 threads, and SMT disabled is, I guess, a small performance boost. Leaving the clock frequencies fixed though, 8, conf eight core configurations were just worse across the board, which was curious. Batman Arkham Knight was another ultra-demanding game when it launched, and it scaled very well with CPU and GPU performance, meaning that it was actually part of our test suite for quite some time. Again, 4K and 1440p results, the GPU is just limiting here, but when we nudge the resolution down to just 1080p, yeah, well, yeah, really and truly, we're well within the margin of error for the results. Gears 5 is a game that I really wanted to look at at 720p, as this title is super duper ultra demanding for the GPU. Unsurprisingly, anything more than 1440p was a write-off in terms of results, as you could easily just explain this with the normal churn of GPU boosting behavior. 1080p and 720p, well, honestly, things don't really change too much with the results being super close. 16 cores, 16 threads was on top, but I don't really know if I'd call it a win. Far Cry New Dawn and Borderlands 3 are almost identical stories to one another. There's practically no benefit from SMT enabled or disabled, since the CPU isn't really heavily leveraging all of the threads anyway, but it's not a negative to disable SMT. I could copy this exact same statement for Assassin's Creed Valhalla, as well as Horizon Zero Dawn, Again, these results are totally within the margin of error and isn't going to make any difference at all meaningfully in benchmarks or just your standard gameplay. I also decided to look at CSGO. I was very curious to see how Zen would perform on it. I know back in the day that CSGO was not exactly brilliant on Zen processors, but obviously now we've seen several generations to improve this. I opted to leave the settings at default high, which yes I know isn't competitive settings, but I figured it would also represent how the average person would play. And I also tested at 1440p, again, you know, uh, the GPU here has more than enough performance spare. You can see that the FPS difference from the different configurations is again within margin of error. I recorded a two and a half minute demo so that I could easily repeat the results again and again. And finally, there's COD. You can just take what I said throughout this uh, video about Ryzen 9, the 5950X, Zen 3 SMT performance, change the words to COD, and there's your answer again. So let's draw some conclusions. What can we take away from all of this? Well, starting things out with the professional side, there is no reason at all, maybe outside the odd legacy application, to disable SMT. Ryzen seems to scale brilliantly with SMT for professional apps with uh, Zen 3. And yeah, the speed ups are just absolutely amazing in certain applications such as uh, Blender. Furthermore, it's worth noting that the core count scaling of Ryzen for professional apps is pretty damn brilliant. We're seeing almost two times speed ups on some of our testing here. As for games, yeah, well, games aren't really benefiting from SMT. You're not seeing a performance speed up necessarily, but you're also not seeing a degradation in performance. Here's the caveat though. The system that I'm using here is for benchmarking. In other words, I don't have a ton of Chrome tabs open. There's no Discord and tons of other things happening on in the background. Because of this, the CPU isn't really getting taxed super hard with things that just might come up. For example, Steam starting to do an update while you're playing a game on uh, Origin or something. Because of this, I would say that actually in general, the system would probably perform better in gaming with SMT, especially in lower core count systems because you've got more threads to handle, well, just random tasks that happen in your system. So to summarize, for 99.9% .9 of users slash applications, I wouldn't worry about SMT. I'm sure that there are legacy applications which perhaps people use today which don't do well with SMT on AMD, but generally speaking, yeah, for most home users, this is not something you're gonna have to worry about. 
With that said, thank you very much for checking out the video. If you have enjoyed it, then of course, normal stuff, make sure to subscribe to the channel and also click the bell icon because, well, the bell icon is life here on YouTube. And with that said, I'm going to let you all go. Take care of yourselves. Bye for now.